What is up guys, Bear Mall here, and real quick I'm going to show you how to build the fully automatic chicken cooker that I made in my Let's Play series. I did go over how to make this on camera in the Let's Play series, but I figured I'd make a separate video for you guys who might not be into the whole Let's Play thing so much, or maybe you just don't want to sort through all the videos to find it. So without further ado, let's get started. First thing you need to do is place down a double chest. This is of course going to hold our final product, which is cooked chicken. And then two hoppers going into it, and behind those hoppers, uh, two solid blocks. On the blocks, we're going to want to place two dispensers. Those are ultimately going to fire the eggs into the chicken chamber with two slabs on top of the hoppers. And then two blocks on the side of the slabs. And then on top of the blocks, place two more dispensers facing inward. This is going to be the killing mechanism, which is going to roast the chickens when they are of the right age. Uh, two blocks on the top of the dispensers back there, and then on the front, just throw down some glass for a little viewing window, just like that. And that's basically the entire containment chamber done. So these dispensers are going to hold and automatically fire the eggs when they go in, so we're just going to need to make the mechanism real quick to do that. And to do that, we need to run a comparator out the back of each one, right into a repeater, and then we need to, uh, whoops, that is not a solid block. So then we also need to run this signal down uh, into this block down here, which is going to activate the dispenser, and also into the comparator. So we want a repeater going into the comparator and a repeater going into the block down there. And then we just run redstone out of the repeater and around and into that repeater and into that repeater, and then we just mirror this on the other side. Like that. No, like that. And repeater, repeater. And that's that whole thing done. So now if there's anything in either of these dispensers, this whole thing will automatically, it'll be a clock, and it'll empty out the dispensers into the containment area. So, speaking of containment areas, let's build that now. So we'll put a hopper into the side of each of the dispensers, and then come up. Make sure you don't run anything into these dispensers. That would probably be bad. And then around the back like that. So the way I like to do it is just to use these two middle hoppers as the, con as the containment area for the cedar chickens. You can use all four hoppers in the line here if you want. It doesn't really matter. It just changes exactly how you have to wire the redstone later up. And we're going to make this two blocks high just to uh, make sure we contain the chickens properly. And uh, I won't put chickens in there just yet. Next thing we're going to need to do is to build the hopper timer, which will control when this lava comes out. So the best way to do that is probably we'll come out like this, and then we'll go up, and then we'll just come back a little ways like that. So now we need to make a 2x6 platform like that. And the hopper timer is a pretty simple mechanism. The only thing you need to do is have two hoppers that run into each other like that. Out of each hopper, you do a comparator which goes into a solid block. Next to each one of those blocks, you put a redstone dust. And then a sticky piston like this next to each one of the dusts facing inward. And then you just put a block of redstone up against one of the pistons, doesn't really matter which one. So now, the way that's going to work is when you put an item into the hopper, this comparator emits a signal, which powers this block, which powers the dust, which powers the piston, and this redstone block is now powering this hopper, so it's receiving items, but it's not putting them back. So this comparator signal is getting weaker, while this one is getting stronger, because there's more items in the hopper. So once this one is completely empty, that comparator will turn off, which will happen in just a second here. Yeah, and you can see it moves back and it starts the cycle over again. Now this one's emptying and this one's filling up. So we can run a redstone signal off of this. So we'll just take the block like that. Get our dust back. We'll run it like that. You can see it's powering it. We'll put a repeater there, and this repeater is actually going to go into a sticky piston facing up. What we're going to do is we're going to build a combination of a monostable circuit and a double pulse. 
I'm just going to break that block so it's not uh, doing stuff while we try and build it. So now you want to make a little bit of a loop like this. And then you want two repeaters coming out of the block that's on top of the sticky piston. Set one to four ticks and leave the other one where it is on one tick. Connect them up like that and run it over both dispensers and down on the other side. So now in each one of these dispensers, we're going to want to put a lava bucket. So you need two lava buckets total. Like that and like that. And that's pretty much everything done. Once we connect this thing back up, it should be working completely functional. So I'm going to use some spawn eggs to populate this with chickens. Chickens... Sometimes you might run into an issue where just running the dust over the dispenser kind of powers them inconsistently. If you run into that, what you can do is just have a repeater go into this first dispenser and then run the dust over and around into another repeater going into the second dispenser. Uh, I couldn't really figure out a prettier way to run this redstone. I'm sure there is one, uh, but it works perfectly every time now. So as you saw there just now, every time these chickens lay an egg, it gets dispensed into the containment chamber here. When the chickens are babies, they're only a half of a block tall, so they aren't affected by that lava right there. Uh, but once they grow up, their heads are in the lava, they get set on fire, and then they burn, and then their cooked meats get, uh, get dropped into down there. So I'm going to let this run for a minute just so I can show you how it works. So as you can see, after letting it go for a while, uh, plenty of chickens in there. They all grew up from the eggs, and in just a second, the lava will dispense. So as you can see, all the chickens are on fire, taking fire damage very slowly because there's a huge number of chickens in there. But then they all die. You can see the babies are just fine. And then the feathers and cooked chicken begin filtering in. So if you just build this somewhere near where you're going to be in your single-player survival world or on a server, it just runs all the time. If you're ever low on food, you just come by and grab some. It's always working. It's a pretty cool design. It's not very compact. <laughs> there are much more compact chicken farm designs out there. I'm just a fan of this one because I don't necessarily like having my animal farms being super compact. That's just me. I'm weird for some reason. <laughs> so if you like this, please let me know. Uh, give me a like or a thumbs up or a subscription or anything like that. Uh, if you have any suggestions for things for me to build in the future, feel free to leave them in the comments. And I hope you have a good day.